Welcome. In this lecture, we are going to talk about overview of digital control platform implementation platform. So, here we will take uh, an example of CMOS based uh, digital circuit implementation. Then we want to differentiate between ASIC implementation and lookup table based implementation. Then we want to talk about ASIC, FPGA and microcontroller. And finally, what are the digital plat uh, control platform that will be considered in this course and finally, why do you go for HDL based implementation and FPGA prototyping. So, first we want to take an example of an AND gate. Okay. So, AND gate we are considering here is a two, two input AND gate where this A and B are the two input and Y is the output. So, we want to implement this gate. First, we will go by, you know, we want to implement using CMOS. That means, if we take y equal to a b, then we can write a b, then we can write a complement plus b complement overall. And we are denoting x to b, it is denoted as a bar plus b bar. So, why do we want to implement in this way? Because we want to use CMOS architecture. CMOS architecture because almost all digital electronics are now, nowadays it is implemented using CMOS technology. So, in CMOS we have a complementary MOS that means PMOS and NMOS. So, how do you implement this CMOS? So, if you take this X bar, how do you implement? This can be implemented by, so this is like sum of this P MOS that means A and B and then product of a b ok. Because if you see that here we are talking about x that means this is the x and what is x? x equal to a bar plus b bar and if you look at this a bar plus b bar that means if both are 0 then x will be 0. So, if you see both are 0 then if a and b both are 0 then what will happen? Sorry 0 means but or that means it will be 1. If either of them 0, then also it is 1. And if both are 1, then it will be 0. That means x equal to 0. So, it is clear from this diagram. Now, once we have x, which is a combination of a bar plus b bar, then we can write y, which is x bar. And this can nothing but if x is the input, it will be an inverter, simply an inverter that will be our y. And how do we implement inverter? It is simply another like this architecture and here we have VDD and this is our PMOS, this is our NMOS and this is our X and this point we are taking Y. So, that means we can implement this AND gate by this is what NOR gate like no, not NOR gate, it is a NAND gate. So, it is NAND gate because this will implement NAND gate followed by NOT gate. So, the overall architecture of this AND gate using CMOS technology, the first stage will be the NAND gate followed by NOT gate and overall this will represent the AND represents. So, in this architecture, we need 6 transistor that means 3 PMOS and 3 NMOS transistor. So, this actually if we go for ASIC implementation, this is the minimum number of transistor that are required to represent an AND operation and that is hardware optimized as well as power optimized. But the problem, what is the problem? What is the problem? So, this architecture is fixed hardware that means it is a fixed hardware, fixed hardware architecture. Fixed hardware. That means we cannot use this hardware other than AND purpose. That means we, we have to only dedicatedly use for AND purpose. Any other two input logic function cannot be implemented. Any other logic can be implement cannot be implemented other than AND operation. That's why 
this is a fixed hardware, but it requires minimum number of transistor. Now, if we go for lookup table based implementation, suppose ultimately we want to write in terms of lookup table. That means if you take two input logic, so we are talking about a two, two input logic where A and B are the input and Y is the output. And we know any Boolean algebra can be realized, uh, you know, can be represented in this truth table. And here A and B, you know, depending upon the A and V value. So, if we can choose what is A Y0 to Y1, Y3 and that will give us what is the function that we are going to represent. That means, so that means in this architecture, the each of this output element that means can take either 0 or 1 and there are such elements are there, 4 elements are there. So, you need total 2 to the power 4 possible function can be realized. That means, there can be 16 variety of 2 input logic function that can be realized using this lookup table. Now, if there are n number of input, then we can have 2 to the power 2 to the power n number of function that can be realized using lookup table. Now, the question is, what is the question? Can we make one hardware, can we make a flexible hardware, flexible hardware, which can be used to realize any of these 16 functions? Because earlier we saw for AND gate, if we go for ASIC implementation and that is the way of ASIC which will optimize the number of transistor and as a result it will also optimize the power consumption. But if you want to use this hardware for any other, any of these 16 functions, can you use a single hardware architecture or not? So let us go. Again we write the truth table and in this architecture, this all 4 binary digit that means this bit have to be mapped here. That means what is the value of Y0? You can simply store it here and this is a SRAM cell, static RAM. So, you can represent this each of these block. That means you can either Y0 can be 0 or 1, Y1 can be 0 or 1. So, you can have such 16 possible uh, you know uh, way we can actually store this element. Now, once we store then we have two select line A and B where A is represent the MSB and B represent the LSB. So, if you see the first marks that means the in the first layer there are two marks and the second layer there is one marks. So, in the two marks the B is the common select line. So, now if B equal to 0 suppose you take B equal to 0 then it will take this top and this top channel. But then which one actually should be mapped to y that will be decided by what is the value of a. If a equal to 0 then this will be selected. So, ultimately this will map to this function. That means y will be y 0 if both a and b are 0 and 0. So, if for 0 0 condition it will be y 0. Now, if you take 1 0 then it will actually route through this path this will route through this part ok. So, that means, that means if I want if we 0 0 that means if this quantity is 0 and this quantity is 0. So, this output y will be connected to this. Now, if we make it let us say let us use a different color if this is 0 and this is 1 then this will be selected like this it will be selected like this. So, it will be y 2 and this is exactly what is the y2. That means, output will map to that particular stored value based on the status of the select line. Now, in this architecture, you can realize any 16 logical function using this hardware by suitably, you know, uh, storing these 4 elements that is it. And this is very fast because it is just a multiplexer. So, it can be almost it can be like parallel operation like a uh, simultaneous operation and y can get the value of y0 almost very fast. But if you go to the earlier block there will be a propagation delay if you have 
more number of chain so the propagation delay may increase so you may have a little longer propagation delay but in this CMOS architecture MUX architecture your propagation delay can be reduced but something there should be some penalty what is the penalty so if we take this cell that means because we know in the earlier architecture for AND operation we need 6 transistor now here we want to see how many transistors are needed so if we take this cell one cell that means if we take this one cell this cell that is SRAM cell it can be realized by this bistable latch so this is the bistable latch and you need two such function here so that if you want to suppose you want to store one so you turn on this switch and store the value of one here then this one will be retained in this path and once it is stored then you disable this switch then it will be hold and you can access this by the output side switch that means when you turn on this output side switch the one data will be accessible so you can take that data out again if you want to store zero then again you turn off this because they are complementary and you can actually again load another number here so by that way you can actually you know store either 0 or 1 any any of this SRAM cell so since such four SRAM cells exist so here we need two transistor for here two transistors are needed and here also we need two transistor okay so then totally six number of transistor needed for each SRAM cell so for four such SRAM cell you need 24 transistors now next in that architecture after the SRAM cell we have multiplexer how does the multiplexer work so these are two input marks now this is a transmission gate CMOS transmission gate and this is a standard you know any digital circuit and these two transmission gates are used to select either A or B now if the select line is 0 then this will be enable and this will be disable and this is a not function so that means y will be connected to a and you know why nmos and pmos are given in parallel because in case of logic 1 and logic 0 either of these are best so in case of logic 0 nmos is good logic 1 pmos is good otherwise if you use logic 1 for nmos there will be a drop and if we have such cell repeatedly then can be regenerative circuit that means the voltage can go beyond below the threshold value okay so that means for logic 1 we should use uh, that means the nmos will be used and for logic 0 if that means y will be connected to a but a can be either 1 or 0 so depending upon the their individual uh, you know this transistor will be selected so by that way if we enable and disable i mean select line if we choose s to be 1 then b will be connected to y so by that way we can actually implement a two input digital marks now you can see for these two input marks you need one two three four plus two transistor for this so you need totally six transistor including two transistor for the inverter so now we want to count but suppose if you have such two marks because we saw that in the first chain there are two marks two marks were there which was like a y0 y1 y2 and y3 but we have made this select line common so since the select line is common so this inverter will be needed only one because it may not be needed for individually because there is a common line so that's why when you take the totally two such marks connected in this fashion so you need totally six into six, six into two that means i can say so six for this plus four for the next plus four so it will be 10 transistor because this two will is common for both the cells so that means for ASIC implementation in AND gate we need six transistor for lookup table based implementation we need totally how much for SRAM cell we need 24 transistor then for two input marks we need train transistor and the, there are two uh, layer of marks the second layer of marks we need six transistor so total, total 40 number of transistor needed so you can see it is almost six to seven times more number of transistor so naturally the number of transistor is increasing so the power loss will increase area will increase and cost may increase so that's why 
this is the trade off between the flexibility and the hardware cost ok. Now, if we compare this ASIC versus LUT representation for this AND gate. So, we need 6 transistor for ASIC and LUT for 40 transistor. But remember when you develop ASIC circuit it is an IC and LUT means there is a flexible hardware where which can be used for any function. But if you want to develop various function using ASIC you may need so many architecture. So, for each this function this ASIC has to go to IC. So, the development time is pretty long and if you want to develop the cost of hardware because of fabrication transistor fabrication. So, this NRE cost can be very very high. But if you are going for mass production that means if you are making millions of such ASIC then this cost per unit cost will be much lower than lookup table based implementation. But in general the non recurring cost is high and development time is also long because it is a transistor any IC development process takes time there are multiple stages of development. But the benefit is that it is harder optimized and power optimized. So, that is why if you go to microcontroller where there are ASIC cells that means the microcontroller has a dedicated hardware for addition block, multiplication block those hardwares are dedicated which is only used for addition. So, there we have the scope for optimization in terms of ASIC. So, you can minimize the number of transistor you can make the it power efficient. So, that means this kind of ASIC based may be microcontroller or any architecture will be useful for low power, power consumption reduction in power consumption. Whereas, this lookup table is very good if you want to prototype various algorithm. So, that means it is configurable hardware, but if NRE cost is also low and development time is also short because you can implement various, but it is very expensive in terms of hardware because the silicon area increases power hungry because there are too many transistors. So, it is it consume lot of power and the large component cost because more number of transistor. So, we have discussed this now this lookup table is the building block for FPGA because when you say FPGA again as it is discussed here we want to have a hardware where we want to test our HDL logic because we do not want to develop ASIC at the very beginning. So, the best way to develop any ASIC first to develop idea test it and prototype using lookup table based arrangement you know check the architecture functionality objective whether all objectives are made. Once it is tested by this hardware then one can go for ASIC because ASIC development time is long. Once it is kind of foolproof then you can go for ASIC implementation. So, this way actually in this course we will be using FPGA so that we can actually implement the digital hardware hardware level logic level and that can be realized using FPGA. What is FPGA? The full form is field programmable gate array. What is this? So, this is one of the architecture of FPGA where you can see these blocks are basically logic blocks. What is logic block? So, the logic block consists of lookup table and that we just saw. We saw two input lookup table which require four number of SRAM cell. Then how many SRAM cell will be needed for four input? So, it will be 2 to the power 4 that means 16 SRAM cells will be needed. SRAM cell will be needed for 4 input lookup table. Then after that SRAM cell there will be MUX then followed by you know after this MUX you will get the output. But remember the output is a scalar. So, it is a scalar output. Even though you have 4 number of input but output is only scalar because it is Y and it can be any you know if you draw the lookup table it can take any value based on the, the status of ABCD, but it is a scalar quantity. Now, once this output is developed then because this propagation delay can vary in order to avoid any data hazard generally we use a synchronous circuit that is a flip flop that is for the storing element it is generally a deep flip flop and after that we use a MUX that means whether to sometimes this can be used for storing purpose and because we can use you know for multiple purpose. So, you can store this value then do for the next operation you can do it pipeline operation you can either pass the current value or you can pass the previous value. So, and this whole block is called logic block and that is the heart of FPGA 
so each FPG can have thousands of logic cells uh, you know that is the logic cell configurable it is called CLB CLB configurable logic block because this block can also be configured based on how are you storing in the lookup table SRAM values and once this uh, logic blocks then there each logic block can be connected by a programmable you can see programmable interconnect because if you look at this the interconnects are also programmable there are switches and also at the terminal point of the IC we have IO pin because outside there will be IO pin and you can access the data and this IO pin when it goes out then it has to have a buffer because it needs because there will be bond pad you know the conducting plate which will behave like a capacitor and in order to overcome the you know fast you know rise and fall we need to provide sufficient current to actually charge and discharge the load capacitor so the buffer circuit will be there and these blocks are also each of these pins are also programmable either you can use like input or output so accordingly the buffer arrangement will be readjusted so the bottom line is this and you can go through detail how it is configured the buffer cell so that means what we learn the FPJ has many such configurable block and inside the configurable block there will be a lot of lookup table and then the configurable blocks are also the interconnection can be configured and also there are some RAM that means the memory storing element as well as DSP block for fast signal processing like a multiplier operation and all these so a dedicated hard core uh, you know a DSP unit and they can be configured and then IO pins are also configured so that means none of the logic block output is connected to the input pin like a physically it through switches so that you can connect a disconnect and connect with any other logic block because you want to check the algorithm to different logic block it is possible so finally when you learn HDL coding like a Verilog HDL that we will learn in our in this code so Verilog HDL is a software platform language which will enable you to write your own algorithm digital algorithm and develop once you synthesize then this has to be implemented when it comes for implementation either you can go for FPJ or you can go for ASIC so accordingly based on the platform the implementation file will accordingly create a net list and routing and then it will generate a bit file and it will be dumped so that you can make the interconnect accordingly so FPJ kit you will be used here is a Spartan 6 FPJ we are going to use but yeah one can use any other FPGA so now if you go for FPGA versus ASIC implementation we have realized the time to market that means since FPGA are you can use for various algorithm so it is very fast time to market you can develop very quickly any algorithm but actually if you go to ASIC solution and which the hardware co uh, HDL code will learn in this course may be helpful to develop ASIC so that development time is longer but NRE cost is also high for ASIC and low for FPGA but the design flow also in FPGA is simple it may be complex because it has to go through simulation routing you know layout and many other things then it will go to the fabrication but unit cost here is high here unit cost is low if you make for mass production the performance will be very high because they are dedicated hardware you can optimize delay and other thing you can optimize power power consumption is low that is why such ASICs are you are the internal structure of or microcontroller and other architecture which has a dedicated hardware and you can reduce the power consumption so for low power application they are very useful but they are dedicated hardware but the unit size is also low ASIC can be very low where FPGA can be high because it has to accommodate more number of transistors we saw for AND gate almost 6 to 7 number of transistors are needed so naturally the size will be very high for FPGA so we got an idea about ASIC and FPGA implementation then CPLD was the older version of FPGA which is used for somewhat low complex algorithm because its capacity is not as high as FPGA but it is again flexibility it is not as flexible as FPGA but it has flexibility price is also very low these CPLDs are used for low 
a power and cost effective application and but here speed can be also very high because it works on almost similar principle of FPGA programmable logic but only thing the flexibility is not as high as uh, FPGA where the FPGA whole entire field can be programmable. Now if you are going for this comparative study uh, ASIC microcontroller and FPGA. So you know the ASIC are the building block and inside the FPGA the hardware can be ASIC that means we have millions of transistors inside the microcontroller and microcontroller will have dedicated digital functional block which will be hardware optimized. So it is similar to ASIC and once you put more and more flexibility you go to FPGA. So from specific to generic the flow is like this way okay and if you go to microcontroller you need a software here the design hardware FPGA that means you can write directly HDL code typically in microcontroller in most of the earlier microcontroller is a sequential operation so execution happen one by one but in FPGA is the you know concurrent operation parallel operation so that's why the FPGA are popular for signal processing application where you need to do lot of um, mathematical computation like FFT and other algorithm which require parallel uh, uh, operation. So that means uh, but if you talk about the power consumption this power consumption will be high whereas the microcontroller will be low. So basically it all depends on what application you are targeting but for power converter of the self application let us say for high power application when you want to use a dedicated digital control card then microcontrollers are generally a very popular solution. But in this course we are going to have some demos in microcontroller but FPGA will be used as a platform where you can also go for ASIC solution that means you can make a digital ASIC uh, IC in the digital IC. So in this course we will be using FPGA that that is what I told and that will enable we will use HDL based coding and we will also show STM microcontroller from STM32 and C2000 series where you will get to know a little bit detail about the capability of individual microcontroller by the design expert from ST Microelectronics and Texas Instrument. So, you will learn detail about somewhat the architecture and the software hardware aspect, but most of this course I will be teaching this FPGA based implementation.